one of the most famous river fisheries in the country today, the royalty stretch of the Hampshire Avon. And we're using simple roving pike tactics, one rod, a little bag, a net, and just wandering around 10, 20 minutes in each spot, just trying as many different spots as we can, see if we can catch as many pike as possible during the short winter day. And we're off to a good start with this fish. Lovely jack, perfect condition. Full of life, as you can see. There we go. Far from the biggest one in here, they go to over 30 pounds in this particular stretch. Hopefully we can get a bigger one, but an absolutely cracking start to the day. River pike fishing is all about mobility and you probably notice I've not actually got much gear with me today. I'm just going to show you what I use for my day-to-day -day river pike fishing. I've got a small shoulder bag that's got everything I need in there. It's got the tackle box, the unhooking gear, a drink, everything you need kind of to get you through the day and some frozen dead baits. I've got a good size lander net. This is actually the, uh, the larger boat net but it's absolutely perfect, you can just stick it on your shoulder, it leaves your hand free, hands free and you've still got your handle which will reach down to the water on the river and it's got the mesh that's coated so the treble hooks don't get caught up in it, it's nice and light. I've got my unhooking mat, as you can see, kneeling on it at the moment but obviously that's an absolute must for carefully handling predatory fish. So that's all nice and light for moving around and during a day you're probably going to put in a few miles with this style of fishing so you don't want to weigh yourself down. We've seen some other anglers here on the Royalty today that have got multiple rods, big rucksacks, chairs, umbrellas and of course if you're just happy to sit it out in one swim then so be it. However, the more swims that you try doing this style of fishing, the more pike you're likely to catch. It all comes down to mobility. Now, with regards to rod and reel, you can see a lot of the swims that we're fishing here today, we're just fishing a yard or so out from the bank. So we don't need a long rod, we don't need a particularly powerful rod. So I'm actually using the Rage Predator boat rod, and that's a 10 foot rod, which is absolutely perfect for getting in under all the overhanging trees and everything else without getting tangled up. So it's 10 foot of a three pound test curve, and it's quite a through action, which is perfect for absorbing the lunges of powerful fish when you're fishing close in. Twinned with that, we've got the 7,000 size EOS reel, and that's got the free spool facility, which is nice just to click on when you're fishing just under the tip in case you get a, a violent take. And it's absolutely perfect being nice and light so it doesn't undo the balance of this outfit. Now, last but not least, we've got strong braided mainline. Now I've been using braided mainline for all my pike fishing for a number of years now, and there's absolutely no reason to be using mono whatsoever. There's lots and lots of advantages to this type of line. Firstly, it floats, so it's up and out of the way, so when the fish do grab your bait, if you're fishing off the bottom as we are today, it's out of the way of everything. It's got no stretch, and that means that when you wind down and strike, try and set those big, heavy gauge treble hooks, there's far more chance of them actually penetrating the pike's mouth with braid than there is with mono. As well as that, if you ever get snagged up with a braided mainline, you can simply put the rod flat so there's no bend in the rod so you're not damaging the rod and obviously pull and your hooks will straighten and you get everything back and you don't leave baited rigs in the water which could obviously damage the pike. There's other smaller advantages as well. I'm trotting baits today and you can just lift the line because it floats off the water and mend the line a lot more easily. So lots and lots of advantages. So I tend to use a minimum of 50 pounds, which might sound very heavy, but even the 50 pound braid that I'm using is only 0 0.30 diameter. So that's less than most 12 or 15 pound monofilament main lines. So absolutely no reason not to use an absolute minimum of 50 pound. So as you can see, it's all about mobility. Travel light, you're gonna catch plenty of pike. I'm gonna load myself up with this lot and make a move on down to the next swim. Well, we've had a lot of fun this morning exploring a couple of miles of water here on the Royalty Fishery. We've managed a couple of fish, however today's all about mobility, so now we're going to move on to the Dorset Tower for the afternoon.
So just trotting down the inside here with a small roach dead bait and the float's just buried. It's gonna wind down nice and hard. The bait's been dropped, unfortunately. And it's taken it again. So there's a little lesson. If fish takes the bait, it lets go of it. It's always worth just dropping it back into the swim. I'm not sure if it was the same fish or another fish triggered by the movement, but this pike grabbed the bait instantly on the way back in. So we're having a difficult time over on the Avon this morning. The Royalty's a lovely stretch. It's got some great big pike in it, but they weren't playing ball. So we've done a, a little move over to the Stour, only a few miles and second or third swim, fish in the net. So it just goes to show river piking. Effort equals reward. You can see the banks here aren't the easiest to get around. So you have to uh, do your army rolls, get in under the fences and sometimes smash your way to the water's edge. But you find these swims and there's some great piking to be found. gap in the tree line here and I almost walked past it to be honest but just the tiniest bit of slack water was all there was maybe the size of a bathtub down the edge but more than enough to to hold a pike and that's what we're looking for the fish aren't going to be out in this heavy flow you can see the water boiling down the middle of the river they're going to be tucked away in the edges out of the flow where they can conserve their energy and wait for a meal to come to them and that's exactly what happened for this one drop this little dead bait in there and it grabbed it almost instantly. Well there we go, there's the prize for dropping the bait in that tiny little slack in the margin. Lovely little jack pike. What we're going to do now, I'm going to pop this one back and let's have a look at the rig that we've been using to catch these lovely fish. We've been having some wonderful sport on both the Avon and the Stour today and I'm going to show you the dead simple rig that I use for this style of fishing. Now we've got the 50 pound braided mainline and then we've got a braid stop there. I've chosen a red one, so it's nice and bright so I can see where it is at all times. And that's just gonna control the depth that we're fishing at. Below that, we've just got a small hard bead, which just protects the float and the braid stop. And the float itself is a 25 gram HD stubby slider. Now these are available in a selection of sizes. However, I've gone for 25 gram. To be honest, most of the time on relatively powerful rivers such as the Avon and the Stour. This is the type of size float that I use as a starting point. Now, moving down, I've got another float stop and usually I have this one set around mid depth. And the reason for this is that when I'm trotting down with the flow, at the end of the trot, I wind back up. Now, what happens with the water pressure, it pulls the rig all the way up to your weight, which means that on the way back up, the bait would be skimming across the surface. Now, if I put this stop halfway up, it'll only move down that far and you can bring your bait gently back up the inside where a lot of the pike will be lurking. So believe it or not, having that little float stop on your line will get you some extra fish. Moving down from there, I've got the quick change egg sinker. Now, the great thing with these is you can change these to match the situation. So let me give you an example. If you're using the 25 gram float with a small, three inch roach dead bait. If you use a 25 gram weight as well, or an 18 gram weight, it's gonna sit absolutely perfectly. However, if I was using a much bigger bait, maybe a, a six or eight inch dead herring, which replicates the food source, the roach and the dace in this type of river, what would happen is the float would be submerged. So to save breaking the rig down, I can maybe go down say like a 12 gram weight, use the bigger bait and everything's still balanced. And that allows me to change methods through the day and still be fishing exactly how I want to. Below that, I've got a snap link. And the reason that we have the snap link there is you can see a lot of the banks here are quite steep and you can see a lot of the swims are quite tight. And this means that when I get a fish in the net, I can just unclip everything, put the rod down out the way and bring the fish up the bank in the net and sort it out without any uh, danger of damaging the rod. 
Now the trace itself, 40 pound, 49 strand wire, and in this case, two size six trebles. Now, these are made out of our normal Rage Predator components, and we do the twin treble and float traces using exactly the same components. So the ones that, you're gonna, that you can buy in the shop are exactly the same as these, or you can choose to make some up like I have here. I've got the bait flag on the top hook there, and that just adds a little bit of extra color. And one little thing that I do often add are these little booby beads. And you can hear that, it's just got a little ball bearing in there, and that gives a little bit of extra noise and color as well with the red. So uh, you can see a little bit of extra attraction at that end. Now, how, we, uh, how we're actually gonna fish this rig depends on the swim. Now, if it's very, very shallow, we might wanna pull our float stops down and fish it near the surface. And there'll be days when the pike wanna come up and feed near the surface as well. And you're only gonna find out on the day what they want by trying different things. However, if we're fishing deeper swims, we can move that float stop up as deep as we want and keep the bait just off the bottom, even in a deep swim. If we're feeling lazy for half an hour as well, we can fish it 12 inches, 18 inches over deep, uh, over depth, and just let the bait lie on the bottom and fish it static as well. So a really basic rig that covers lots and lots of options and is absolutely perfect for roving around in search of river predators. Another relatively modest fish, but they scrap a bit. And you can see why these short rods are absolutely perfect for this style of fishing. This is a 10 foot boat rod. And in a lot of these swims, anything longer really would get in the way. And it's got a lovely through action. Well, they say big bait, big fish. It didn't work this time. A little jack. Almost got the bait back as well. That's what I was aiming for there. But there we go. Another pretty little star pike in the net. Well, since we moved over onto the star, it's been all action. It seems like every other swim we get a take. Um, no monsters so far, but on a nice late winter, early spring day, great bit of action. Really good fun. Just going to show you how to mount the bait for a bit of river piking. The bait that I've chosen is a pollen, and as you can see, it looks a lot like a dace or a chub, which are some of the main food sources for the pike in these type of rivers. Now, the way that we're gonna mount the bait is the opposite way around to how we might do it on a still water. So what we do is we take the barbed prong of the treble hook, we just pop it through the mouth of the bait, and then with the second hook, we again find the barbed one and pop it into the root of the dorsal. Now we've got our bait flag, and we just pop that on there for a bit of extra attraction as well. There we go, absolutely perfect. Now the reason that we mount the bait that way round is that when we're trotting down through the swim and we retrieve it at the end, it's gonna come back up the swim very naturally. If we mount it the other way around, it will spin and it'll be really unnatural. Now don't worry about your bait fishing vertically in the water because particularly in warmer months and in shallow water, cyprinid species, which are the main prey items of pike, spend a lot of time hanging vertically like this in the water. So don't let that put you off in terms of presentation. And as you can see, with a few little twitches that I impart into the bait by mending the line and putting little twitches through the float with a rod, that transmits down through that non-stretch braid through the trace, and we get a little bit of extra movement into the bait which can obviously get us extra bites as well. And we'd mount a, a small live bait in exactly the same way. And on these type of rivers, both methods are really, really effective and both have their day.
For those of you that haven't fished with predators on the rivers before, it can be quite daunting to know where to start. Obviously you've got lots and lots of water, and not all of it will be holding fish. Now the swim in front of us is a classic example of what I'm looking for when I'm predator fishing on the rivers. Now as you can see, just upstream here, we've got a big tree out in the water, and that's breaking up the flow. And the result of that is the water across the main part of the river, and along the far side here, is whipping through really fast. Now predatory fish don't want to be sat out there, they want to be tucked away in the slack water, ready to dart out and intercept anything that swims through. So what you're looking for is either slack water or water that's just eddying, where it's just going round in a circle. So if you look for those spots, there's certain places they're going to occur. If you look around bends, behind bridge supports, obviously behind trees, anything that breaks up the flow. If you look for those spots, look for either the slack or eddying water and you won't go too far wrong. This time of day, as the light levels drop, it's a great time for predators. They've got an advantage over their prey fish and they're often feeding well. I'll just pop my float down against this little overhang there. And the fish has taken it fairly quickly. Scrapping on the top. We've got a lot of room in this swim. Low branches and everything else. Oh, even the smaller ones, these river pike are, are very strong combating the flow all the time, they haven't got an easy life. They're absolutely full of fight. <laughs> there we go. Well, the big fish certainly haven't been on the feed today, but we've had numbers of fish and we've had a great day's sport and it just goes to show that there's fishing out there to be enjoyed of this quality. We've probably had 15 bites today, maybe only landed half the fish, but it's been great fun. We've covered lots of ground, learnt some new swims. I'll definitely be coming back and fishing these areas on the Star and Avon again. And there's rivers up and down the country that offer sport at least as good as this. So get out there and give it a go.